Welcome to KU Patshala, a novel initiative of the University of Kerala to archive educative videos. Cliff is taking part in this venture wherein we are exposing the instruments being housed in the Cliff campus for the benefit of people who want to use the facility for their research purposes. The facility is managed by qualified technicians, highly trained, as well that governed or managed by uh, faculty who are all experts in the, in the field. The idea behind housing all the instruments in the one roof is that not only that you will be able to use the instrument but also get the feel of how exactly an instrument is functioning. For that matter, we are encouraging people to come to Cliff while their samples are analyzed so that they will be able to understand how the instrument is functioning to get the desired results. We have qualified faculty as well as outside experts who will be speaking during the video uh, filming on the application value of each instrument being housed in this. The central instrumentation facility which is being housed in the Carrieton campus has got about 21 equipments, high-end equipments being supported by different organizations in the country. I am not going to the details of the functioning of the instrument as is going to be demonstrated uh, in the videos. So I welcome you to view the videos and straight away we see the videos about the functioning of the instruments which are housed in the Cliff campus. Thank you very much. Welcome to KU Parasala videos. Here we will begin video, video description about our X-ray diffractor. X-rays are discovered by William Brompton, a German physicist in 1895. Apart from the medical applications, X-rays can be used for useful for finding the crystal structure of various materials. It was more lawyer who have to have uh, done pioneering work on the X-ray crystal company. And afterwards, Bragg, Father and Son Lou made a theory for the X-ray diffraction and they got the shared Nobel Prize for Physics in 1950. Afterwards, there has been a tremendous develop, development in the crystal structure determination using X-rays. Even though there are others like neutron diffraction, electron diffraction, and uh, synchrotron radiation, uh, diffraction techniques uh, with, uh, with respect to synchrotron radiation. X-ray diffraction method is still the first and still gives the first hand information about the crystal structure of materials. In 2014, University of Kerala installed an X-ray diffractor meter using DSD Pulsgram at the Department of Physics. The diffractometer is, uh, diffractometer is from Bruegel and its uh, model is Bruegel D8 Advanced. Here, apart from the, apart from the uh, X-ray diffraction pattern, the system also has refinement software named Topox, which is a high-end software, and, uh, and the data file PDF2 from ICD. This system is one of the most sought after equipment by the material scientist in the University of Kerala. With the use of this equipment, we have found several new compounds which is being approved by the ICDD. Hi, myself Nisha Giuni, working as a technical officer at Cliff, University of Kerala, Karivatan campus. Here we have Broker D8 Advanced X-ray Diffractometer. Let us familiarize with it. As we know that X-ray diffraction or XRD is one of the basic and non-destructive characterization technique in the field of materials. Through XRD, phase identification as well as chemical information of the sample under study can be obtained. As the name XRD suggests, it involves the diffraction of X-rays. So, 
What is diffraction? Diffraction is the phenomenon in which electromagnetic waves like X-rays, bends or deviates when it encounters an obstacle. Then next is principle. X-ray diffraction is now a common technique for the study of crystal structures and atomic spacings. It is based on constructive interference of monochromatic X-rays from a crystalline sample. These X-rays are generated by a cathode ray tube filtered to produce monochromatic radiation collimated to concentrate and directed towards the sample. The interaction of the generated X-rays on incidence with the sample produces constructive interference producing diffracted X-ray satisfying Bragg's law of diffraction given by n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta where n is the integer lambda is the wavelength of the x-ray d is the interplanar spacing and theta is the diffraction angle Bragg's law relates the wavelength of electromagnetic radiation to the diffraction angle and the lattice spacing in a crystalline sample these diffracted x-rays are then detected processed and counted by scanning the sample through the range of two theta angles, all possible diffraction directions of the lattice should be attained due to the random orientation of the powdered material. Conversion of the diffraction peaks to despacing allows identification of the compound because each compound has a set of unique despacings. Typically, this is achieved by comparing despacings with the standard reference patterns. Next is essential part of a diffractometer. X-ray diffractometer consists of three basic elements, X-ray tube, sample holder and X-ray detector. First one is sources of X-rays. X-ray tube is a common source of X-rays. It comprises of an evacuated tube which contain a copper block anode bearing a metal target made up of metals such as molybdenum, tungsten, copper, rhodium, silver or cobalt. The cathode is the tungsten filament. On passage of electric current through the filament, electrons are generated which move towards the anode under the highly accelerated voltage, typically 30 to 150 kilovolt. The accelerating electrons on striking the metal surface knock out the electrons from the inner shell and the vacancies created are filled by electrons from the outer shells. In the process, metal atoms emit X-rays. However, this involves heating of the metal blocks. The metal block is cooled with a supply of water to dissipate the excess of heat generated. The emitted X-rays exit through the tube through a beryllium window. Monochromization of X-ray is achieved by using nickel molybdenum filter which absorbs the unwanted emissions while allowing the desired wavelength to transmit. Generally, X-rays of 2.2 kW copper tube with 1.5418 Armstrong and X-ray tube voltage is 40 kW and X-ray tube current is 30 mA. Next one is the sample holder. A goniometer is like a high-tech sample holder. It serves to hold the sample in the beam of X-rays but also rotate the sample to precise degrees. This allows the crystal to be struck by X-rays in many different orientations need to collect enough diffraction data for quality analysis. Here we have D8 goniometer. It consists of two circle goniometer with the independent stepper motors and the optical encoders. Next one is the X-ray detector. The detector moves in a circle around the sample and its position is recorded as the angle 2 theta. And it records the number of X-rays observed at each angle 2 theta. The X-ray intensity is usually recorded as counts or as counts per second. In powder diffractometer, normally Bragg's Bernardo geometry is used. To keep the X-ray beams, 
properly focused in the incident angle theta changes in the conjunctions with 2 theta this can be accomplished by rotating the sample or by rotating the x-ray tube here we have detector is linux i it counts the number of x-rays scattered by the sample next one is the calibration calibration of the x-ray diffractometer will be performed a minimum of once per a month however calibration is not limited to once per month and can be performed as needed here calibration is done with corundum samples next one is operating the broker d8 advanced diffractometer for daily startup the instrument will be in standby mode ensure the chiller is on the instrument is ready to go when we see a yellow light top with a radiation symbol and a green button light on the left hand side of the enclosure the operating power is 40 kilo volt and 30 milliampere and the standby power is 20 kilo watt and 5 milliampere Next is basic sample preparation steps. Before loading the sample into the sample well, clean the sample well, spatula and the glass microscope slides with the isopropyl alcohol. After that, place a sheet of white paper under the sample well before transferring the samples to the sample well. If there is enough material available, a smooth sample can be obtained by overfilling the sample well and using the edges of the glass microscope slide to scrap across the surface of the well pushing excess material onto the white paper now the sample is ready and we can place it into the appropriate sample puck now sample is ready for measurement. For that we have to open the door of the XRD machine by pressing this switch. Next step is insert the prepared sample into the desired sample analysis location onto the instrument and close the door. Next step is move on to the software part. Select diffract dot measurement center icon from the start option. Now select lab manager from the drop down box presented upon the software insertion. Leave the password field blank and press enter. Now application is initializing. Then click on commander tab from the left of the screen or top of the screen. Now a new window opens and on the left side we can see all the instrument component parameters. Before the instrument can be used, the instrument control drives must be initialized. For that, click on initialize selected drives option to move the drives to the desired position and initialize them now all the drives are initialized and ready for use as indicated by green check marks on all the instrument components parameters next step is to set the x-ray generation voltage and current to 40 kilo volt and 30 milliampere by typing the desired value by the in increment of 5 units in the editable field and pressing the set button. Next step is starting a scan. Scan can be started using start job option from the software. Now a new window opens. On the first column we have to enter the sample code. On the next column enter the required experiment program and followed by entering the path where the spectrum to be saved. Then Start the scan by pushing the start button. When a scan is completed, the spectrum will be saved as a dot raw file or dot brml files next step is to evaluate the phase of the sample using eva software for that open the file in the diffract dot eva software first step is background subtraction
then next is prepping of k alpha lines followed by smoothing then click on peak search option then from the peak column view option we get all the details about 2 theta d etc now we can get the result in the pdf form the things might need on the desktop first one is measurement server need to be running to allow pc to communicate with the diffractometer usually starts automatically upon logging on the diffract dot second one is diffract dot measurement this is where you control your measurements next one is the diffract dot eva data visualization transformation search and match options are and various other analysis are done here next one is the top pass advanced analysis structure refinement solution phase analysis etc next one is the file exchange file format exchanger can also be done with the eva next one is the pdf powder diffraction file database covers inorganic when doing search and match in eva this uh, database is used next one is for shutdown first step is check the measurements are complete second one is ramp down the power of x-ray in diffract dot commander by changing settings of voltage to 20 kilo volt and current to 5 milli ampere second next one is press the generated display button to turn off the x-rays next is press the standby button the standby button turns of all power except the lights next is the turn the main disconnect switch from the position i to zero next one is the applications x-ray powder diffraction is most widely used for the identification of unknown crystalline materials example minerals and the inorganic compounds determination of unknown solids is critical to study in geology environmental science, material science, engineering and biology. Other applications include characterization of the crystalline materials, identification of fine grained materials such as clay and mixed layer of clays that are difficult to determine optically, determination of unit cell dimensions, measurement of sample purity, with specialized exotic technique, exotic can be used to determine crystal structure using red wheel refinement, determine of model amount of minerals, quantitative analysis, etc. Let us find up this session. Thanks for watching.